Hey folks, uh, this lesson is a long lesson. I apologize, but it'll make your next lesson, tomorrow's lesson, a much shorter one because of the work we put in on this one. So again, I apologize for the length of this one. So modeling exponential growth and decay. So how can we use exponential functions to model the increase or decrease of a quantity over time? Okay. All right. So describe the end behavior and growth of a function right here. Now I went and grabbed a picture of a TI here because it says use a graphing calculator and I don't have one on my computer. I used to, but I, I had to turn in my, my district computer. Oh, you're going to hear some bells you guys soon because I'm on my prep period and you're going to hear some bells to go to class. So anyways, that's what that is. So use a graphing calculator to graph the exponential function f of x equals 200 um, uh, times 1.10 to the x. Now it's an exponential function because x is in the exponent, okay? So what we do on this, you guys, here's my graphing calculator. Let me zoom this up a little bit right here. So uh, sorry about that. Right here, there's a Y equals button. So when you press Y equals, you'll see Y sub 1, Y sub 2, all the way down to Y sub 7. And in Y sub 1, you punch in this function right here, Y equals 200, then the parentheses 1.10 to the X. Okay, and then for the viewing window, what you got, it says to go from the, the X is from negative 20 to 20 with a scale of 2. So the viewing window, sorry about this, you guys, is right there. That's the window button. So when you, when you click that, it'll ask you to punch in negative 20 to 20 in a scale of 2. And then same with the Y's, negative 100 to 1,000 with a scale of Y. And then sketch a curve of the axes provided. So right here is a graph button. This little button right here is our graph button right there. Okay. So um, uh, when we when we do that, let me shrink that up here. So I'll, I'll probably come back to this and grab it again. So anyway, so uh, when we do that and we hit the graph button, that top right hand button, it's going to look something like. Um, uh, like this okay all right so then it says uh, sketch the curve so you're gonna sketch that curve now my kiddos they couldn't we, we just drew that curve and I did this on my calculator on my overhead uh, Elmo overhead and then it says use the trace feature to move along the right so if we used uh, that trace feature I think the trace feature is um, uh, sorry can't see that very well but is that little button right there so trace and then a little cursor will come up there goes the bell uh, one more then the cursor will come up and it'll blink 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 right there and it'll ask you to go to the right and to the left and so you'll see an x value down in here and a y value over here so it says describe the behavior so what you can see is as x goes to the right as x gets bigger then y gets bigger so something like uh, that as x increases then the graph get increases and goes larger and larger and larger okay and then move your cursor to the left and describe your behavior so as x goes goes down the graph approaches zero okay and you'll see y getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller when you do that right there okay so describe the domain of the function okay so your domain is how far does it go to the left and how far does it go to the right it goes forever so you can say all real numbers and your range is it goes up forever but it, it doesn't get uh, down to zero so it's just greater than zero identify the y-intercept okay sorry that's the last one so the y-intercept is where x equals 0 right there. So when x equals 0, we get 200 right there because you get 200 times anything. So the 0 is 1, so 200 times 1. So the y-intercept of the graph is at 0, 200. And an asymptote, you guys, an asymptote is this line right here. It's a line that uh, the graph increasingly gets close to but will never touch, okay? So the line uh, y equals 0 is our asymptote right here. So why is the value of the function always greater than zero? Well, since a positive number is being multiplied by another positive number, here's a positive times a positive, it's always going to be a positive number, so which is above the x-axis, something like that, okay? All right, so here's a decay one. So we do the same thing. So the reason why it's decay is it's uh, 0.8. All right, so I told my students we're going to skip this. This will be in the next lesson, okay? So let's just go ahead and skip that right here, okay? So here is our exponential growth and exponential 
exponential decay. So if it's a growth function, then we add the growth rate. If it's a decay function, if you see the word decreasing, then it would be subtracting the, 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 the rate. That's what R is, is the rate. So if it said like it had an 83% growth rate, then this would be 0.83. So 1 plus 0.83 would be 1.83. And then T is usually for time. So the time in, in typically in, in years, it might be in seconds or something if you're talking about bacteria or minutes or whatever. So whatever the time is right there, okay? So R is your, your growth rate or decay and T is your time. And uh, so, so the one represents 100%. So when we have like money being involved, then it's 100% plus how much interest they get. Okay, so the 100% is your one, 1.00. 1 okay, and so plus your interest rate, so it'd be your 100% plus the rate would be like 112%. Okay, anyway, so let's try one of those. So let's write an exponential growth function for the situation and graph the function and state its domain and range and the asymptote. And what does the y-intercept represent in the context of the problem? Okay, so here, a painting is sold for $1,800 and its value increases 11%. So this would be 0.11. Okay, uh, after each year it is sold. So find the value of the painting in 30 years. Okay, so. So here's our function right here. Since it's increasing, then it's 1 plus r to the t. So it's going to be 1, and it's always a. I'm sorry, I didn't talk about a. a is always your initial amount. So a is the, the beginning amount. So it's 1,800 times 1 plus 0.11. So 1 plus 0.11 is 1.11 to the t power, OK? So when we plug in the time after one year, two year, 30 years, we got to do the exponent first. So we're going to use our exponent feature on our calculator right here, OK? And then, so, uh, and then we multiply by 1,800 at the second part. So now let's let t equal 30. So this will tell us how much money it's going to be worth in 30 years. So when we plug in t equals 30, we got to do the exponent first. So I'm going to do that right now in my calculator here. So let me go ahead and uh, get that set up here. Where's my cube? Okay, so I'm going to do uh, 1.11 to the 30. 1.11. So if you, whatever calculator you have, you'll either have um, uh, like a... A button on there that kind of looks like this you guys um, it looks like a, an upside down capital V so it's either that button or you might see a button like this um, uh, Y to the X or X to the Y so something like that okay so it might be X to the Y so you either use this button or this button and how you do it is you press that in then press one of these buttons whichever one you have then press 30 and then equal. So I'm doing 1.11 and I have this button on my calculator right now. So I hit that and then I hit 30, hit equals and I get 22.89. Okay. And so then this is 22.89. Then we multiply it by 1800. So times 1800. And that's where this number comes from. $41,206. So after 30 years, the painting is going to be worth about $41,206 right there, okay? All right, so it did say create a table of values to graph the function. So let's go ahead and do that. So when um, uh, we plug in 0, anything to the 0 equals 1. So uh, 1,800 times 1 gets us 1,800. So we'll graph this. We'll plug in 8 now. So I'm going to plug in 8. So 1.11 to the 8. 1.11 y to the x, 8, and I get 2.30. So that's what this would be. Then I multiply that times 1,800, so times 1,800. Sorry, I don't have a calculator handy that has that feature on here. So I get that value right there, okay? So when I plug in 16 this time, I get 9560. And when I plug in 24, uh, is that what I get? Yeah, let's try that here. So 1.11. I think I made a mistake on this somewhere here. So um, I get 12.24, uh, so times 1,800. And yeah, that's right. Okay, somewhere I goofed up on this. Okay, and then um, and then when we plug that in, we get that value right there. Okay, I think I goofed up on the next one. Sorry about this. 
I forgot to fix it. And I, this is just a long one. I just, I just don't want to go back and fix it just yet. And I'll fix it before I teach it again next year. All right, so now let's graph these points. So I'm going to graph this x, this y, this x, this y, this x, this y. They give you the graph, so they give you the appropriate graph, okay? All right, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and plug those values in, okay? So here's 0, 1,800, okay? So this is 11,000, so this would be 5,500. So 0, 1,800 will be like right down there. And then 8 and 41 48 would be like a little bit higher and so on so so we're going to get these points right here okay and then we just go ahead and graph them connect them up with a nice smooth curve and they give you this graph if they don't then just make it and make it so it fits your data okay it's got to go all the way up to this 50,770 right there Okay, and then uh, it said asked us to do something else. Said, uh, now determine the domain and the range. Okay, so the domain is how much it goes to the right. Okay, it doesn't go to the left forever, so it's uh, uh, x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range is, okay, the range is um, how far it goes up and down. It goes down to 1800, so the range is uh, 1800 and bigger, so something like that, okay? Uh, oh, your domain is a T, sorry for time. Okay, and the asymptote is this line right here, Y equals zero, or T equals zero. Okay, so um, I know it would be Y equals zero. So the Y intercept is the value when, when T equals zero, which is the value of the painting, which was 1800 bucks, which uh, when they first bought it. Okay, so this one's a decay function. So we're going to do the same thing with this decay function. So the population of a town is decreasing. That's why it's a decay at a rate of 3%. So 0 0.03 is 3%, okay? 0.3 is 30%. Okay, in 2005, there were 1,600 people. Find the population in 2013. Okay, so from 5 to 13, that's eight years right there. All right, so write an exponential decay function. So it's 1 minus r to the t. Don't forget, this is your starting number. So that's 1,600. So 1 minus 0 0.03 is 0.97. So y equals 1,600 times 0.97 to the t power right there. Okay, so find the value in eight years. So... Uh, in eight years, that would be in 2013, we plug in eight. So we punch in 0.97, y to the x, eight, and I get uh, 0.7837. That's what this is right here. And then we multiply it by 1600 and we get that. So the population in 2013 is going to be about uh, 1,254 people. So maybe the an industry closed down or something and people are moving out of town. Okay, of course my kid said, oh, people started dying and all, and all morbid. But <laughs> anyway, um, so now let's graph it. So we're going to plug in 8. Okay, so 8 we got, and we plugged in 8 because that was one of the ones they gave us right there, 16, and we plugged in the rest of those. Whoops, I did a copy and paste. This is where I goofed right here. This should be um, uh, 770, so I goofed right here. So so this should be 770, not uh, uh, 770. That's where I goofed was that guy right there, and then this one should be 604. 604 should be right there. So anyway, let me clean this up so it looks a little bit more presentable. So if I if I took that out right there mm -mm -mm, and took that out, and I'm going to take a picture of it so it's nice and set. I'm I'm sorry, you guys. I know this this frustrates some kiddos. So um, anyway, so you get 770 for this one, and you get uh, 604 for this one right here. And uh, that should be the correct um, uh, response for that one right there, okay? And then I'm going to take a picture of that, and here we go. Okay, so when I graph those points, it's going to get me these guys right here, okay? So we're going to go ahead and they give you the graph. They always give you the graph, okay? So I'm just going to keep that right there, okay? That looks good, say. Okay, so here we go. So let's graph those points. So this is going to be a decay function, okay? So it goes down. So here's 0, 1600. It almost looks linear, almost looks like a line because it was only 3%. So it's not decreasing, you know, exponentially. It's hard to see it's exponentially. It is exponentially, but it's going down just 3%. So 3%, 3%, 3%. So if we just keep doing that and then graph all those points, there's our graph. And then it said... Um, uh, describe 
the domain. The domain is uh, t is greater than or equal to zero, and the range, the time is greater than or equal to zero, and the range is from 1600 all the way down to I don't know if the town gets becomes a ghost town. Some towns are ghost towns. If you go like to Nevada, I was telling my kiddos. When the gold rush was going on, there was a bunch of towns that popped up, and then when they were out of gold or silver or whatever it was up there, they were mining up there, they moved away. And you see the buildings, and some of the buildings still have furniture in it and everything. It's fascinating. But anyways, um, there's no people living in there. It's kind of spooky. So anyways, so uh, the y-intercept is the value of y when t equals 0, So what, uh, which is the number of people before it started to lose the population. So it was at 1,600. Okay, so, uh, and then we, we skipped that in my class, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump. So we skipped all of that, and there was the assignment that we did in our class. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.